in this episode we are going to solve one interesting problem which is a rope mechanism so let's look at how we can solve this problem a flexible string of length so we will call the length as ls 1.4 meters is fastening to support at point A and B. So from the diagram, you can see that we have point A and point B. So this is the string from A all the way to B is a string which is attached to that support. So point A and B are at different elevations, which we can see that the position of A is quite higher than the position of B with B being lower than A. The horizontal distance between the supports equals 1.2 meters. So from point A all the way to point B, the distance is 1.2. A load P hangs from a small roller that slides through frictionless along the string until it comes to a rest in the equilibrium position at C. So what we are trying to do here is that after the string was attached to the support, there is a force which is also attached to the string to pull it down and there is a equilibrium at this position. So if the string has a breaking strength of 160 Newton, so any force above the 160 Newton, the string will break. And if a factor of safety S is 2.5, what is the allowable load P? Remember, the allowable load P is the load that we can hang on the string. Are we okay? So this is very simple. This is just like we should calculate for a load that we can hang or the load that was hung, which is P, on the string that is not going to break it. Are we good? So let's look at that. Very simple. You have to pay attention and use critical eyes. So let's write down our parameters. First, we saw that the string has a length, Ls, which is length of string as 1.4 meters. So we also saw that there is a breaking force strength or the breaking force. Let me call it F as 160 Newton. There is also the length of the support. We can see that the distance between point A to point B is given as L, which we are seeing that L is 1.2. The 1.2 is different from the 1.4. The 1.4 is the entire length of the string, meaning if our passing on it from here to point C back to point B, that's the length. And the 1.2 is just the distance between the supports. Are we okay? So it's 1.2 that way. We have a factor of safety as 2.5. Factor of safety just means that if I want to design something which can carry 160, I should put in a parameter such that its strength should be more than that one so that in case any unforeseen situation happens it can still withstand it are we okay that's the factor of what shift so we have it this way before we can even draw our free body diagram and make the analysis based on what i just said that the factor of safety is just a factor that is brought into the rope or the string such that if any other circumstance happens, it should be able to accommodate the force that is what coming extra force. Are we okay? So, in that case, what is the actual tension in the string? We have seen that the force that it can carry, even if there is what abnormality, should be one for 160 newton. Then, what is the actual force that is inside? the string and that is going to be a tensional 
force, right? Because it is fixed at some support and this is pulling it down this way. So the strength are going to react this way and that is setting it into tension. So in order to find the actual tension inside the string, what we have to do is to establish a very simple formula. So always, for example, if I have, I want to know the tension, it is from this formula, F is equal to T multiplying X, where if I, I want to hang something, inside of the rope or if i want to hang something where the rope tension is of value two and i want to introduce this factor of safety as also two i'm going to design the system to be four if you get this because what i'm bringing is two but i'm designing it at a four strength such that if anything happens it can still contain that so from this simple formula we can say that the original tension inside the loop should be the force the maximum or the breaking strength over the factor of safety so that is going to be 160 on 2.5 and this is going to give us 64 newton so the tension in the loop is 64 Newton. So let's get that one. So any tension in this rope is 64. Remember, it is a uniform rope. So we are also going to have 64 Newton over there. Are we okay? So we have this in mind. Can we draw the free body diagram and make some analysis? Yes, we can do that. So free body diagram of the rope. So I'll just, this is the first rope. This is the second one, and this is the force P bringing it down. So it is in tension this way. This part is also in tension that way. So we can see that some angles are going to come in. Let me call this angle as theta. I'll call this angle as phi. And the same tension, so T, T. I'll call this as P. This is point A, this is point B, and I'll call the meeting point as point C. A very interesting one. So here we are going to still use the equilibrium analysis over here. Resolution of forces from basic mechanics idea. So what we are going to do is, we are going to apply summation of forces on the Y, summation of forces on the X. So if we are going to consider summation of forces on the y equal to zero from this free body diagram. Now, the rope, they are inclined at an angle, right? So to get a better understanding, let's look at P. P is also a straight or it is in its vertical position already. Do we see that? So we can say P is moving down, say all forces moving up should be positive. This let me call this one and this has two. The P will be what the third one. From the root one, they are uniform, they are together. But for analysis sake, I'm just calling it one. From the root one, if I'm to resolve it onto the vertical, it is going to look into this, or it is going to be like this. Do we see that? So resolving it vertically, assuming this is a small right angle triangle, this is going to be cos. So the T is going to be T cos theta. If you don't understand, please look at this small right angle triangle. This is the angle. And this T part is serving as the hypotenuse. Resolving it onto the base, the vertical base, is going to relate with what? Cos. And the same thing happens to the second one. If I'm going to resolve it onto the base again, it is also going to be plus T cos phi. And the P is in the opposite direction minus P is equal to zero. So this is the equation relating the vertical components. Now let's try to relate the horizontal components. Now the horizontal component where summation of 
force on x should be zero, what can we see? We can see that if I'm to resolve the same force onto the horizontal part, this is going to look into this direction. This is going to be to this direction. So from the first one, relating it onto the horizontal is going to be sine. So that is going to be negative t sine theta plus, because I'll choose this direction as my positive. Plus that one is also t sine phi equal to zero. So from this equation, we can make some analysis here. Can we send one of them to the other side and say t sine theta is equal to t sine phi, right? So t can cancel itself. t will be out. Living sine theta should be equal to sine phi. From this, mathematics will tell you that this means theta is equal to phi. So meaning the two angles are the same. Where you see theta, you can put in the value of what? Phi. That's very simple. So let's move to the next page and make the analysis. So now that we know that theta is equal to phi, what do we do? Okay, so let me draw the free body diagram here again so that we can use it for analysis again. So this will be very simple. So this is the vertical component. This is it. This is our P. This is theta. This is phi. Now we know they are the same. This is T. This is T. This is what? P. Now, what we are also going to look at here is from the question, we saw that the rope or the string has length 1.4 meters. That's the total length, meaning from A to C, moving back to B. The total length of the string should be 1.4 millimeters or meters. So here we can write that A to C plus B to C should be equal to that. Is that true? I'll call it as equation one. This is what we have now. I want to make another analysis such that we can do for the length. Now we want to make the length analysis. I want to know the entire length. So look at this equation. If this from the first part where I call it one, A to C, the same analysis if I'm to draw a small right angle triangle here, this is 90, the same analysis. I'm going to resolve, I want to find the length AC. So I'm resolving it onto the X and onto the Y. I want to find this length from here to here and from here to here. I know that the total length is 1.2, but what's the distance from A to this part, then from this part to this part. So from the point A to the C part, for the horizontal is going to be resolving AC onto the horizontal with this angle is going to be AC sine theta. Is that true? Resolving the AC part here onto the horizontal here is going to be AC sine theta. Plus, what is also the horizontal distance here? So resolving the CB or BC onto the horizontal is also going to be B, C, sine, phi. Remember, phi is the same as what theta. So we can use a uniform angle as theta. And that is going to be the entire length, where it is 1.2, 1.2. So from here, I can say sine theta should come out, AC plus 
AC should be equal to 1.2. Now, what is AC plus BC from equation 1? It's equal to LS, the length of the string, which is 1.4. So sine theta can be equal to 1.2 on AC plus BC. We divide both sides by AC plus BC, which is 1.4, which implies that our theta is going to be sine inverse of 1.2 on 1.4. And this is going to give us an angle of 59 degrees. Do we see that? All right, so now we know theta. The question is asking us to find the value of P, but look at where we are still looking for angle. So now we saw that the, the only equation linking P is the summation of force on the y direction equal to zero, where we had this expression as T cos theta plus cos phi minus p equal to zero. Now cos theta and cos phi are the same. So we can say cos theta is equal to cos phi because the angle the angles are the same. So can I say then 2 cos theta minus p is going to be zero. So if I make p the subject, that is going to be 2 by cos theta. We know the value of the t, are we okay? Which is going to be 2 by, what is the tension? The tension we saw is 64 multiplying cos. What is the angle? We have 59. And p is going to give us 65.92 newton. So this is the allowable, therefore, the allowable load is giving us 65.92 newton. So this is the load that the P is having. It's very simple, right? Just take your time, go back, watch the analysis, present it in your own notes, and you are good to go. Please subscribe to the channel, share the video to other friends for them to also understand the concepts. Thank you.